Okay, TypeScript. So here we're going to talk about JavaScript language variants. Uh, and then we are going to spend some time learning uh, features introduced in ECMA JavaScript version 6. And then we are going to learn uh, features introduced in TypeScript. So JavaScript language variants. So there are several language variants of JavaScript, starting with the ES5 and ES6, ES7, which is sometimes called the ES2016, and TypeScript, AdScript, Dart from Google, and CoffeeScript. All these language variants are trying to provide extra features on the top of JavaScript. Okay? ES6 and ES7 come with a set of new language features. Okay? However, even today, ES5 is still the version that is most widely supported by browsers. Okay? Now, TypeScript is a Microsoft extension of JavaScript that comes with powerful type checking abilities and other object-oriented object features such as generics and uh, interfaces and things like that. Now, TypeScript is a superset of ES5, ES6, and ES7. Okay. Now, in order to run TypeScript, basically you want to transpile into ES5, and then ES5 code will be executed in browsers. Okay. So TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. So it includes all the features of ES5 and ES6 and TypeScript itself uh, provide extra features such as interfaces and generics. Okay. So because it's a superset of ES5 and ES6, you know, any code that you have written in ES5 and ES6, TypeScript will understand it. So why Angular 2 uh, you know, community has decided to use TypeScript. Uh, the reason is because uh, the uh, uh, again TypeScript provides uh, a lot of new features. I'm going to talk about why, you know, concrete reasons why Angular 2 uh, community adopted TypeScript as a new language of choice. Okay, you can build Angular 2 application using you know plain JavaScript, meaning ES5, but you lose type checking other language features of TypeScript. So uh, in fact, if you go to Angular 2 site, all sample applications are written in TypeScript. OK? OK, so TypeScript tools. Uh, first, transpiler. So the transpiler is TSC. So TSC is, is to compile TypeScript code to JS code, meaning ES5. Okay, so you type TSC and then you provide the name of your TypeScript code, then it will generate TypeScript code.js file. And in order to run it, then you're going to say node uh, my TypeScript code.js. Okay, so this is a two step process. Instead, if you're using TS node, which is the NPM, which is the node package, then you can actually perform the transpi transpile transpilation and execution of uh, TypeScript code in a single shot. So here, you're going to install it. So you're going to install it, uh, all these things, uh, the, uh, the uh, um, TS node. So you basically, uh, the uh, MPM uh, install dash G TS node. And uh, then you should be able to actually run TS node and name of the TypeScript file, then it will uh, compile and then it will execute and that's pretty much what we are going to use in the lab Okay, so in order to actually install and run TypeScript basically you are going to npm install dash g TypeScript and npm install so this one will actually install TSC uh, This guy and uh, then if you say TS node then it will uh, run it will install TS node Okay and then you can run TS node and my code. That is the TypeScript code. Okay, so let's move on to ES6. Okay, so ES6 has introduced these features, uh, classes. Now classes are first class uh, thing in ES6. And let and const variables, arrow function, sometimes it's called the called fat arrow, modules, 
promises, decorators, and full off. So we're going to actually take a look at each of these in a bit more detail. Okay, so this is the old way of creating a class. So basically, you are going to have a function constructor, and then you're going to use a prototype to add methods and properties. Okay, it works, but it's cumbersome. So in ES6, they introduced the actual class. Okay, so let's actually, you know, create uh, here we're gonna create the uh, user ts file and here we're gonna create the uh, class class user and we're gonna actually have ID and first first name I uh, will have a name and age or something like that and we could have a constructor method constructor method uh, and it will receive ID and name and age and basically we can assign uh, to local fields ID ID and this name name and this age age something like that okay and we can certainly have another uh, you know the uh, property which happened to be a method so it could be get uh, full get full info method and this will return return and uh, just name in name and age this uh, name and this age okay so now we can create uh, the uh, let user and new user and we provide ID of one might be 11 name sang and age 99 something like that and then we should be able to say you know the user and get uh, full info something like that okay and uh, we're gonna just use a, a console log to uh, execute this code console.log and like this okay all right, so we have this uh, user.ts file. So in order to run it, basically, you know, you can actually use uh, TSC. You, you know, let's actually try to use a TSC first. So it's going to be user. Okay. So for now, we don't have. We just have a the TypeScript file, right? But if you say TSC user TS, then it will generate the uh, JavaScript file. So if you take a look at the here, we have in fact the uh, yeah the uh, you know user. JS is uh, the uh, created. So in order to run the JavaScript file, uh, if you take a look at the JavaScript file, that's basically you know using this uh, function constructor, right? Okay. So in order to run the JavaScript code, you use a node and then user.js, right? Okay. So saying 99. Uh, so let's actually delete the JS file. Uh, in order to run uh, the uh, the TypeScript file in a single shot, then you say ts node and user. Okay, user TS or user is just fine. Okay. All right, so it ex it executes and then display saying 99. So that is a class concept. Is a class class keyword is basically introduced in ES6. Okay, so that is a class. Next, class inheritance. You could actually have uh, inheritance just like in Java. So as you are going to see, you know a lot of these features are something that you see in Java. You know other object-oriented language such as uh, Java and uh, the uh, the uh, C sharp, right? So you you know if you have coming if you're coming from a Java background, you're gonna actually feel right at home. Okay. All right. So here we're gonna actually create the uh, child class. So class uh, user. I'm gonna just say student. Student. Yeah, so I'm gonna just use create right here. So the uh, class student extends is using the same keyword extends user, okay, and it has its own uh, property. So we're gonna just say school, okay, and uh, constructor, and uh, it could actually receive you know four ID name and age and school right and here we should be able to call super this is again the same in Java right super and then ID name and age okay and then uh, we should be able to assign school with 
school argument like this and you know we can certainly have another method here get uh, full yeah, so school full info okay and here it should be able to uh, the uh, you know the it should be able to access all the information all the fields of the parent class as well as uh, uh, its own so here I'm gonna just access the uh, name of the parent so here this uh, name and uh, then return this school all right so what is going on here uh, why it doesn't like oh so this is the method so we have to actually have this okay and we should be able to create a student object that student and the new student and uh, three saying age 33 and school is good school like that so we have created a student right and uh, then you should be able to console the log and the uh, student, uh, student, student, and then get full school information and make sure it is a method. So you have to provide the parenthesis. Okay. All right. So now let's actually run this guy, TS node user. Okay. So this is from the uh, user class, and this is actually from the um, uh, the student class. Okay. So that is class inheritance okay uh, variables uh, ES5 uh, it has only one variable called a var now ES6 introduce let and const okay so ES6 provides a new way of specifying variables called the let and const so let and const create a block scoped variables they live and die within this block so this is what we know in Java right uh, the uh, the uh, uh, but before let and const uh, they did not really have a variable in this block scope okay uh, the difference between let and const is that let can be reassigned while const cannot be reassigned so before ec es6 the only variable is a var the problem of var is uh, it's a function scope variable okay so you know suppose you have es5 example like a var even if this for loop is out you can still access i because i is a function scope rather than uh, block scope if you're using let then it is only available inside this all right so let's actually try this so here uh, you know for if i use var i uh, in let's say some kind of items so uh, let's actually have uh, items items is some kind of array um, yeah some kind of array and like this uh, you know if I try to access I it is still possible okay so there is no compilation error because uh, I is in fact the uh, you know the uh, function scope okay uh, in this case it's kind of global scope because it's in the global space okay so this is not what we want you know we want to be able to make sure that i is only available in this block right so if you're using let then it says ah cannot find i because i is only in this block scope okay same thing with the const okay uh, again you know it is uh, it cannot find i so uh, the uh, you know that that is a good thing okay okay so that is a let and const okay template string so it also introduces a template string so in you know many of the uh, web applications you want to actually preserve the uh, multi-line strings as it is all right so uh, ECMA 6 now introduced this so I'm gonna say let's say template one and then it's going to be back uh, you know two backward apostrophe so here I should be able to specify and let's say uh, h h1 low h1 like this and then uh, p good thing p and then I should be able to console the log and then template one. 
Okay. And, uh, you know, you, you're going to see that this is exactly preserved. Okay, so that is template. Uh, it does also have some kind of uh, interpolation. So, you know, if I do have uh, the, uh, let's say I have uh, let x5 and uh, let y and uh, 7. Okay, and here I should be able to say dollar sign and then uh, x plus y like this. Okay. And then you know it should execute this code. Okay, so let's run this guy. Okay, so you can see it's executed five plus seven, and then twelve is displayed. Okay, all right. So that is a template string concept introduced in ES6. Uh, modules. So module is basically uh, you know the uh, JavaScript uh, module in ES6 is standardized the module systems uh, over existing module systems such as AMD and Common JS. Okay, so by default, anything you declare in a file in ES6 project is not available outside of that file. You have to use export keyword to explicitly make it available. Okay, so let's say I have a user you know, class right now here, right? So if I want to use a uh, user class in another file, so let's say uh, another, another TS file. So let's say I want to use the user class, okay? So let user, and then I say new, you know, user. And uh, so, you know, I say, uh, and age 44, something like that. Okay, so uh, the uh, cannot redeclare block, yeah, so this is, I'm just using a different variable name, okay? So now let's actually see whether user2 is in fact working. So console.log and user2 uh, get full info like this. So yeah, so let's actually see whether TS node uh, or another. Yeah, so you know, the uh, VSC somehow doesn't complain about it, but when you actually try to run it, you know, it complains about the fact that it doesn't know anything about the user. So in order to do that, we have to export it. So here we have to say, oops. So here I say export, okay. And uh, then uh, the, uh, let's see whether, uh, and then I have to actually import here, okay. Oh, now it actually complained about it. Cannot find username. So we have to actually, you know, so let's see whether CI works. Okay, the CI works. Okay, so now I imported it. And uh, then if I run another, and uh, then it works. Okay, all right. So that is the uh, uh, JavaScript modules. Okay, promises. This is something that is introduced in ES6 to write, uh, you know, asynchronous code. Basically, you are going to, uh, you know, uh, create a promise object, which take the uh, two argument, resolve and reject function object. And uh, basically, when this resolve method is invoked later on uh, in some kind of asynchronous operation, then data is actually being received. And uh, once you got the promise object, then you can call then method to receive the data. And if you want to catch an error, then you're going to actually call the uh, catch method. Okay. Uh, I could not get this promise code to work in the standalone mode, but you know we were able to actually see it works uh, inside the uh, uh, Angular two applications. Okay. All right. So I'm going to just move on. Error function. So you know, basically it is providing more concise syntax for writing function expressions. So this works exactly like in Lambda in Java, right? So if you're familiar with the Lambda in Java 8, this works exactly the same. So this is ES5 uh, function code. And, uh, you know, basically you are just removing this function. You're just basically passing arguments. And then this is the code, okay? So this is called the fat arrow. Uh, so, you know, basically, uh, you know, let uh, multiply 
multiply uh, and let's just say multiply one and uh, this is all way of actually doing things right so so you can use you can use the function and function is taking x and y as an argument and uh, then the uh, the body of the function is you know return x times y x uh, x uh, times y like this right uh, the same code be written as um, let multi by two to and uh, you know basically if you're using a fat arrow you basically specify argument y and then using like this and then if it is a single statement then you say x x uh, times y you don't have to actually say return y like this okay if it is in fact a multi statement then you should be able to uh, you know use the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the curly brace like this okay so it's curly brace so let's say we have a multi statement you know maybe I want to do uh, you know the uh, console uh, cons console the log whatever but whatever and then I want to compute uh, X times Y in this case I have textly specified return like this okay all right so either one should work fine so you know we could actually say console.log and then multiply multiply one and we provide three and four and uh, let's copy this code and uh, uh, multiply two and should actually return uh, mul multiply multiply uh, it should actually return the uh, the same value okay so 12 and 12 okay all right so this is fat arrow works exactly like in lambda okay okay so that is arrow function uh, now the fat arrow also changed the way this binds in functions okay so when fat arrow is not used if you're using plain JavaScript each function in JavaScript defines its own this context object this causes a problem because if a function is a callback function this is not representing the context you want you know so one workaround is to create a closure as shown below so what I'm saying is this suppose I have a class 5 here okay okay uh, yes yeah, so let me create class my class uh, 5 so this is actually using you know ECMA uh, uh, script 5 okay and here uh, the uh, you know I say name is string is uh, let's say I'm gonna say sang5 okay right now I'm gonna actually call the uh, you know set timeout set timeout uh, method here uh, oops, yeah. Yeah, yeah I want to actually code completion set timeout this is the one okay good so the timeout is let's say the three seconds and then this is a function object so inside the function object, you know, I'm gonna actually do let's say console.log and then I want to this name like this. Okay. Uh, why is actually causing parameter declaration expected? Yeah, that looks fine to me. Why is actually uh, why is having a problem? Mm -mm -mm. So, name string five and uh, set him up. Yeah, so, this is a function object and uh, console.log this name and 3000. Yeah, looks looks good to me. I don't know why it's actually. Yeah, I'm gonna use maybe fat at all. Mm 
Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Oh yeah, I have to be inside the method. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Constructor, constructor. Yeah. So you know, whatever method, I'm just I'm just using a constructor. Yeah, stupid. Okay, so basically, whenever my class object five is created, this constructor is invoked. Inside the constructor, it calls the time set timeout, and this function object is going to be invoked in three seconds. Okay, now this dot name is going to be undefined because you know callback function in the function each function object has created its own this object. Right, so let's actually see that object. The uh, so uh, let my uh, my my uh, my var my 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 let one yeah my let one is new my class five like this. All right, and uh, you know then let's see whether you know what what gets actually displayed. Okay, so I'm gonna just remove all these guys. Save the change and another. You will see undefined in three seconds. Oh, wait a minute. Why it works? Oh, I'm using fat arrow. That's the that's the solution. I was actually trying to use the uh, function. Okay, so function. <laughs> eh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so here uh, function and uh, the uh, here console lock lock and this dot name okay so this one let's see what happens okay so you'll see in three seconds it will say undefined because this in a function you know so this function object creates its own this but what we want is the uh, this object of this my class 5 object right so this is a problem of old way of using this in a function object Okay, so workaround is like this. You know, here basically uh, in the constructor, we're gonna use a closure like a self. We just uh, save this this object here. All right, and here var, and uh, then instead of using this, we are using self. So this has been the workaround. Okay, so if I run it, then it will say uh, the uh, same five. Okay. So it works, but it's kind of kludgy, you know. So now, if you're using a fat function, fat uh, fat arrow, then this problem doesn't happen because a fat arrow function does not create its own this object. Okay. So let's actually, uh, uh, you know, change this one to with a fat arrow. Uh, fat arrow here, and now console log, and here we can say this dot name, and. Uh, uh, Is missing. Uh, let's actually start it again. So it's function. So and we move this guy and this guy and then. Okay. So you know we actually convert into a fat arrow. All right. And you know so we don't need to use the self anymore. So this we can just use the this. Okay. Save the change, and then when you run it, it should work. So you know this time, uh, I'm gonna just change it to sang six because you know just to indicate that it's using the uh, ECMA six version of fat function. Does this make sense? Okay, so it's strongly recommended to use a fat arrow whenever possible instead of function. Okay, and it's simpler to use as well. Okay. So that's basically what I'm talking about here. So this is the uh, using fat arrow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Moving forward. So we have covered ES6 code. Now let's move on to TypeScript. So why TypeScript? Uh, you know what uh, Java community has found so far is that building large scale JavaScript application without using compile time type checking turned out to be very, very difficult even if you do all kinds of testings, 
okay uh, so you know we Java developers and C sharp developers we all know how important the type checking is uh, in terms of you know making sure we you know we detect all those compile time uh, problems okay uh, another thing they found is that you know building large scale code without proper tooling in you know such as Eclipse or NetBeans or IntelliJ IDEA you know I mean if you think about building large scale Java application without using those tools it's gonna be impossible you know you need all this uh, compile time error detection all those refactoring capabilities code completion and things like that because JavaScript turned out because JavaScript is a type a dynamic type language it's rather difficult to build those kind of capabilities into tools now with the TypeScript, with compile time type checking, those kind of tools are now available. And that's basically what you're seeing in Visual Studio Code. You know, whenever you actually type something, you can actually see exactly what compile time error type, you know, problems are right inside the, uh, the tool, right? Okay. So JavaScript tools are not powerful enough uh, compared to the ones in other object-oriented programming languages. So TypeScript is designed to address those problems. So TypeScript is strongly typed language like in Java and C Sharp, which enables compile time type checking and also enable uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, enable, uh, enabling the availability of those tools. Okay, so these are the language features uh, in TypeScript. So these are provided features over ES6. Type annotation with the compile time type checking, public, protected, private, and type interface inference, interface generics and decorators. So let's take a look at each of this. So uh, let's actually go back to user here. Okay, so now I have not used any type things yet, but you can specify the types. So ID is a number type and uh, name is string type and a is now the uh, uh, number type okay so now when you're creating a user so this is you know perfectly fine but if you try to create a user with uh, in this case let's say string right okay uh, yeah so the number uh, so the uh, so let's actually try this one Okay. Uh, this is interesting. So uh, when try to use this guy, yeah. So it should actually. Oh, maybe I should actually specify here as well. Yeah. So this number is. It has to be a number, and the name is uh, string, and age is number. Okay. Now it actually detect. Okay. So you know this one. Uh, the uh, argument of type 33 is not assignable to parameter type of string and same thing here yeah so this one doesn't seem to be actually <laughs> yeah so if you provide the uh, uh, string of 99 so if I tape XYZ then it probably oh maybe this is actually detecting this one first if this is okay and then yeah so it you know so VSC is not uh, perfect. So you know it 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 it, uh, it detects the problem only when this is kind of valid. Okay. All right. So you can specify the type on the properties. You can specify types on the arguments. You can specify the type on the uh, the method. So get full info. You know it's, it's actually returning string. Okay. Or uh, it could be void, or it could be uh, the uh, any. Okay. So you know the uh, you can specify type in uh, properties, arguments, and the method. Okay. So that is compile time type check, and uh, public, protected, and private for controlled access. Again, we we know private, protected, and public in Java. So it works pretty much the same. Private uh, properties can be only used inside a class. Protected could be used. The, uh, this class and also its subclasses and the default is public okay yeah so this is kind of straightforward so we're gonna just move on interfaces okay so basically uh, the uh, um, uh, um, uh, the TypeScript also introduced the interface again this is exactly the same concept of uh, the uh, uh, the uh, in Java okay so I'm gonna just remove this guy. So let's actually create the uh, interface, interface, 
and uh, user and it does have uh, three fields username and uh, string type and password is a string type and uh, and confirm confirm uh, confirm the password whatever well if you use a question mark that's optional okay so string okay so now when I create so I'm gonna actually have a type of user interface type okay so now when I create the uh, you know user here with some kind of object JavaScript object username sang and password whatever and uh, this is perfectly fine because the confirmed password is optional but I could have uh, the uh, confirmed password uh, with some whatever value okay okay so uh, the uh, that's perfectly fine okay uh, the interfaces in this case are just the properties but interface could also contain some methods so I'm gonna actually have a method here so uh, a method and uh, it's going to you know now when you're specifying a method inside interface just like in Java you should not have any body of that method instead you are just specifying the uh, the type of it so here I'm gonna say it's receiving uh, the uh, you know two numbers maybe number number so maybe this is the uh, multiply multiply number and number and then it returns a number like this okay uh, oh, the, uh, oh so I should actually say it should actually have a name as well so here is the uh, uh, X number Y number like this okay all right so in this case uh, so you know the uh, when user is created then I also have to provide the uh, uh, multiply the uh, uh, multiply and now we have to provide oops uh, the uh, we have to actually provide uh, the um, so in this case the um, uh, 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 so here oh yeah we have to actually provide the actual the uh, you know the method so multi yeah so here we are going to provide uh, X uh, let's say 4 times 5 uh, uh, let me see oh we have to actually provide um, the uh, yeah so either it could be actually a function object like this or it could be a fat arrow okay so the um, uh, fat arrow times uh, oh so you know the uh, what am I doing this is uh, uh, so it's going to be uh, X uh, times Y times is X times X multiply y uh, okay so let's see uh, user object multiply and the number uh, so uh, I could actually use the uh, function yeah so you know this is a fat arrow so this one should work fine but let's actually use the uh, let's try this one first okay so let's try we can actually use a function x times y and uh, then the function object is going to be return x times y like this 
uh, what is why is not working uh, so username uh, the is not assignable to a user uh, only literal maybe space and known properties and multiply does not exist in the type user oh let me just remove this guy uh, okay so mm, 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 multi Yeah, looks like I have um, y is not the uh, multiply x is the number, right number, it returns a uh, number. So now we should say uh, the oh, let user user type uh, spelling mistake. What is the uh, what is a spelling mistake? Username, password. Number, number, number. Multiply. Multiply. Oh, okay. So actually, thanks much. Yeah, so. Okay, mistype. Okay, so you know the uh, now uh, you sh I should be able to actually use this user object. So you know console console dot log <sighs> user multiply, and I can provide the actual uh, five and six, and uh, then yeah, when I run it, ts node user and uh, then it should work fine. So instead of using function object, I should actually use the effect arrow. So again, you know, so remove this guy, remove this, this, yeah, so basically effect arrow, x times y, okay, and then I can just remove this guy like this, all right, and it should work exactly the same. Okay, yeah, so basically interface could actually contain a method and method you basically providing the type of arguments and then the type of return value and then when you're creating the actual object you actually provide the actual body, okay? All right, that is interface. Now generics, see, you know, you guys know generics, right? So basically it works exactly the same. So if I want to have some kind of array, let's say let my array and we want to have this one as the array of uh, array of uh, let's say string okay and then when I try to my array and uh, let's try to push push uh, you know the uh, it, the string should string should work fine right string one uh, something like that that should work fine but if I try to uh, push uh, some kind of number, then it's a compiler. Okay, so you know it says uh, argument type of a four is not assignable to a uh, parameter of type string. So it is generics exactly working uh, like in Java. Okay, all right. So that is generics. And decorators. Uh, decorators are functions that are invoked with a prefix a symbol immediately followed by a class parameter method or property. You can think of decorators uh, like annotation in Java. Okay, uh, these decorators are proposed for future version of JavaScript, but because Angular 2 team really need to use decorators, as you have seen before, yesterday and tomorrow, yesterday and uh, you know the uh, today, uh, we are using decorators to create the component and pipe and all that stuff, right? So decorators are now being part of the uh, uh, the uh, TypeScript language that is being used in Angular 2. Okay, so that is the end of the presentation. So let's. Uh,